Story 1. Am I the a-hole for not giving my own meal after treating my girlfriend to dinner? My girlfriend, 25 female, and I, 29 male, live in New York City, and there's a popular app where you buy leftover restaurant food. Restaurants advertise surprise bags at a reduced price in order to reduce food waste. The customer doesn't know what they're getting until they pick the food up, but the cost is at least three times lower than the normal menu price. E.g., if an entree is usually $24, the restaurant is allowed to charge $8 at most for it. These are hit or miss. Sometimes you get exactly what you want at a greatly reduced price, but sometimes you get something that you otherwise wouldn't have picked from the menu. I ordered a surprise bag from a barbecue place that I was picking up on the way home yesterday. I texted my girlfriend asking if she wanted one, but she said no, she wasn't in the mood for barbecue. However, there was an Indian restaurant right next door that also had surprise bags available on the app, so she ordered one of them. The barbecue was $12, and the Indian food was $10. When I got home, I unpacked the meals to see what we got. I was psyched about my bag. Since I paid $12, I knew the value had to be at least $36, but honestly, the platter looked a lot more expensive. This was a hit. Keep in mind that we live in the West Village, which is the most expensive neighborhood and the most expensive city in the U.S., so $36 for one meal is pretty typical. They were, there were burnt ends, ribs, pulled pork, baked beans, potato salad, bread, onions, and pickles. My girlfriend, however, was less lucky. Her surprise bag only had six different types of soup, half of them being variations on cauliflower soup. She was disappointed, to say the least. She asked if we should share my barbecue, and I said, no, I'm hungry. I offered to buy you some already, and you said no, so I'm going to devour it. She got mad and called me the a-hole. I told her if she didn't want soup, she should have ordered something specifically instead of using the surprise bag app. I then told her to just order something off a of food delivery app. She said she didn't want to spend the money. Another bit of context is I make a lot more money than her and pay all of our rent. I know she's running a bit of a lean financial picture right now. I then tell her that if she doesn't want to pay for delivery, I'll walk to the bodega on our street and can buy her something there. Another bit of context is that we live on a fourth floor walk-up with no elevator and she broke her leg in a car accident a month ago, so it can be tough for her to get around. She says the grill is probably off there and all she wants is a hot meal. I tell her she has soup. Anyway, she thinks I'm the a-hole, but in my defense, one, I offered to buy her barbecue to begin with, which she declined. Two, she picked out her own food and I grabbed it for her on my way home. Three, she wasn't satisfied. I suggested two solutions, either ordering something from an app or going to a bodega. Am I the a-hole? You got a lot of food. You can't share it? I mean, I don't think you're an a-hole if you don't want to share, I guess. I don't know, but I really don't see the issue here. Like, it could be my favorite thing in the world, which I'm going to say right now is a sub from my hometown, which I'm going to be at tomorrow, and I'm gonna get multiple of them and bring them home. I'm so excited. I can't tell you how much I love these subs, especially now that I live like three and a half, four hours away from that hometown and I cannot get them. I love these subs so much. And if I was like coming back home from up here and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get one of these subs, I should call my partner and see if she wants one. And she was like, no, nah, I don't think so. And I got home with it. And then she smelled it and knew what she was missing out on. She's like, oh my God, that does smell so good. And she was like, could I have some of that? I would cut that bad boy down the middle and give her half of it because I love her. And I know like, yeah, at the moment she didn't think she wanted it, but then it's like, oh man, now I actually see what I'm missing out on. Oh, it sounds so good. Could I please? Of course I will. Would I have to? No. Do I think you're an a-hole for not doing it? Not necessarily. But I really genuinely don't understand why you wouldn't share a big, bountiful meal like that. And then you can have some cauliflower soup. That stuff isn't bad either. Come on, get your veggies. Story 2. Today I effed up by absolutely destroying a girl's face. This story happened a while ago when I was a teenager. I read another Today I effed up story that reminds me of this tragedy. My church used to have a retreat designed for kids and teenagers where we spent about three days in a camp. During those three days, the staff organized mostly fun activities, because we're kids, and Bible studying, which was fun as well. Uh, the camp has a gymnasium where we do most of our physical activities. One of these activities is similar to musical chairs, where the participants sat on a round table with wooden sticks in the middle. The amount of sticks is equal to the number of participants, minus one. 
Then all of us are dealt four cards with one person drawing cards from the remainder of the deck. If the person wants the card, they swap the card with one from their hand and pass the swapped card to the next person clockwise, if not just discard it to the next person. Whoever collects four of a kind first can grab one of the sticks in the middle and the table and the rest follows. Whoever didn't have a stick in their hand will receive one point. Also, if any participants touch the stick without having four of a kind, they receive one point. Once someone gets four points, they are out of the table. As you can visualize, the game can get very intense. I was participating in one game, and after a few rounds, things were starting to get intense. Once everybody was comfortable with the pace of the game, I began to move super fast. Cards were flying here and there, and no one wanted to wait for someone to bend down or reach over to grab the discarded cards. A few even fake reached to trap other participants to lose the game. It was chaos and everyone was laughing, but super tense. During this chaotic moment, I noticed that someone grabbed the first stick, and I followed suit. I instantly reached for the near stick, grabbed it, and yanked. Without knowing, I didn't realize that there was a girl across from where I was sitting who also grabbed the end of the stick. My reaction was too fast, and I couldn't stop. When I yanked, I pulled the girl so hard toward me, knocked her in the admin, jerked her torso forward, and slammed her face right on the table. The room gasped with shock, and I instantly dropped my stick, realizing what I had done. Everyone's mouth was agape as she sat back up with her forehead bruised, her nose was bleeding, and she was crying so hard. Worst of all, she was about five years younger than me. One of the chaperones immediately grabbed the first aid kit and tended to her wound. Fortunately, the nosebleed was shallow and there were no broken bones. The chaperone who helped her was a nurse. I apologized profusely and even though it was a knee-jerk reaction, I let my adrenaline get the better of me. Everyone stopped playing afterward and I kind of ruined the mood. After I made sure that she was well-treated and okay, I just spent the rest of the night in the room not wanting to come out in shame as I just absolutely destroyed a poor little girl's face. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even put the blame on you. You're like a young little teenager or a kid or whatever. Your kid's doing this. The chaperones should have seen how wild all the kids are getting, just like, you know, going crazy. And they should have been like, this is a bad idea. We should maybe tell them to calm down. We have let this situation run amok. And it did, and bad things happen. And yeah, I mean, you can feel a little bit bad or whatever, but eh, you're a kid, you're a teen, things happen. And I'm sure she was fine after that. I hope she was fine after that. But no, really, this kind of lands on the chaperone. Like, I'm sorry, you know, if chaperones just like dump rocks on the floor and they go, hey, kids, just throw some rocks around. That'll keep you entertained. And a kid gets hit with a rock. It ain't the kid's fault. That's the chaperones. Story three. I think my girlfriend is only with me because she can't be with her best friend. I've been with my girlfriend Jordan for a little over two years. We live together, and we have two cats. Up until this weekend, I genuinely thought everything was perfect in our relationship, which I know is what everyone says in these posts, but I really was thinking that I was going to ask her to marry me sometime in the next year. We don't even get into arguments. Jordan is very sweet and easygoing, and normally we just mesh well on everything. Honestly, if everything in our relationship hadn't been so good up until now, I probably would have just broken up with her this weekend. But because things have truly been so perfect, I'm not sure if maybe I'm jumping to the wrong conclusion about what to do because my feelings got hurt. The other person who's important in this story is Jordan's friend, Mark. She's known Mark for their whole lives because they both grew up in the same small religious community. Jordan isn't part of that religion anymore. She decided to leave the church when she was, I think, 19 and moved to the state that we live in now. Mark is still in the religion and apparently takes it really seriously. I'm told he now works for the church back in Jordan's hometown. As far as I know, Mark is the only person from the religious community that Jordan still talks to besides her parents, which I'm mentioning because I now think it could be a red flag. So on Saturday, I met Mark for the first time because he was in our city and Jordan wanted us all to have dinner together. At this point, I wanted to say, I will admit that when we were first dating, I found out that Jordan had a best friend who was a guy I didn't really like, especially because it seemed like they were on FaceTime with each other a lot. But since it was a childhood friend and they mostly didn't see each other in person, I just trust Jordan that Mark was only a friend and didn't let it bother me, and eventually I got over it. So, when we were going to dinner, I wasn't jealous or suspicious of Mark at all. If anything, I was somewhat excited to finally be meeting him since I've been hearing about him for two years. But then, the way Jordan and Mark acted at dinner is what convinced me that there's something going on there other than just best friends. 
I honestly don't even know how to describe it, except to say that I've never seen two people act more obviously like they were in love with each other. They literally would not stop touching each other, they were constantly touching each other's arms and shoulders, and at some point they were actually even holding hands. They completely left me out of the conversation and were laughing about inside jokes, and every time they'd laugh they'd do this thing where they put their foreheads together, or that was when they'd be holding hands. And then, also, they were just looking at each other in a way that I didn't feel comfortable with at all. It was honestly even worse than the touching. It just wasn't how anyone would look at somebody they're supposed to be just friends with. I'm 100% sure that every stranger looking at our table thought that Jordan and Mark were the couple and that I was her brother or something. I felt like a third wheel the whole time and Jordan didn't even notice how awkward she was making it for me because she was way too focused on Mark and all the attention she was getting from him. And that's not really like Jordan at all. She, usually she's a lot more considerate and would notice immediately if I wasn't having a good time or if she was accidentally being rude and excluding someone at the table. So it was genuinely really jarring to be sitting there with her and Mark and basically feeling like I didn't know my girlfriend at all. It was like he turned her into a completely different person who didn't even care that I was alive. So finally at one point when Jordan got up to go to the bathroom, I just said to Mark, so are you into my girl or what's going on here? Mark, nothing's going on at all, that ship sailed a long time ago. So what does that mean? Did you guys date at some point? No, we never did, and then when she left the church we both knew it meant that we were never going to. And we've accepted being in each other's lives as friends, there's nothing else going on at all. That makes it sound like the only reason you're not together is because she left the church. And all Mark did was shrug. Well, what if she came back to the church? Would you marry her? Oh, she's not going to do that. You might as well ask what would happen if a bicycle had six tires. And so then, when Jordan came back to the table, Mark said to her, Opie wants to know if we'd be married if you weren't a godless heathen. Jordan, why did you two call your mom while I was gone? And then she and Mark both just laughed about it and changed the subject. So because of dinner and that conversation and everything else that I've written about in this post, I really feel like Jordan and Mark are in love with each other, and not just best friends like they say, and the only reason they aren't together is because they can't compromise about their religion. I think Jordan thinks that because she's okay with that decision, she expects me to be okay with being her second choice, and in the meantime she's actually secretly wanting to be with Mark. So that makes me think that I should probably obviously just have self-respect and break up with her because I shouldn't be in a relationship with someone who would rather be with somebody else. But then the problem for me is that our relationship has been so perfect and Jordan has always treated me so well except for this one night. The only time she's ever acted like this was on one occasion that Mark was around in person. Normally, even when she's talking to him all the time, she's never made me feel this way. So on the one hand, I'm wondering if maybe it doesn't matter what Jordan's feelings are for Mark, as long as he isn't going to be around, it doesn't actually seem to affect our relationship. So maybe I just need to cool off and go back to trusting her that they are indeed only friends, even if it seems to be true that they have complicated feelings for each other. Or should I just end things? Gee, if only there was a person that you were in a committed relationship with that you could maybe sit down and talk to about your feelings. Someone that you also trust and so that you could maybe understand what they're saying. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take this poster's side 100%. Now, maybe there is something going on with them feelings-wise and stuff like that. I don't know. I have also known people who are just very touchy-feely, especially when they've been friends since they were children because as little kids they were always like holding hands and together and such, and it just carries over to being an adult. Also I will say like, oh she was acting completely different and ignored me that night. Yeah, like the first time she's seeing her best friend in person after two years of you guys being together and she's excited. And also like, when you're with someone who you were friends with as a child and in like high school and stuff, you kind of revert to being that person when you're actually around them. It happens to almost everyone I've ever known. That's just a known thing. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to completely dismiss the poster's feelings here. Like, they, they are valid. They're a little uncomfortable. I will say the fact that they were only okay with the male best friend was because she didn't get to see him in person. Like, chill out, dude. You need to have some trust. This person has some major trust issues they need to address. And they also have communication issues. Talk with Jordan about this. But I think you just need to trust her and quit jumping to conclusions. Holy cow, just take some time and talk with her first. God. Story 4. Today I effed up by making a dinner reservation as a celebrity. This happened back in 2018 and I still regret doing it today. 
My wife and I were in Buffalo, New York for a friend's wedding. We checked into a hotel the night before and noticed there was a Morton Steakhouse attached to the hotel. My wife suggested we go there for dinner and I told her I'd make reservations online once we checked into our room. While she was taking a shower, I made the reservations. When the site asked for a name, I put in my first name, Zach, and was prompted to put in my last name. For some reason, I thought it'd be funny to put in Galifianakis. Yes, I googled the spelling. I smirked as I confirmed the reservation and didn't think about it again. For reference, I have a beard similar to his in The Hangover, and our body shapes are arguably the same, but that's about it. In a low-light setting with some distance, it was, if someone suggested to you that I was him, you wouldn't be able to say, no way. I usually wear a hat as well, and this evening was no different. About an hour later, we head down to the restaurant for dinner. The place was very busy. My wife approached the hostess and told her that we had a reservation under Zach. I was standing about 10 feet away in a sea of people, but as soon as I saw how the hostess reacted with a huge smile, I immediately remembered what I did and quickly thought to myself, oh F, they think it's him. As I approached, I could hear the hostess tell my wife, we've arranged a table in a more private setting for you both. My wife turned around and stared into my soul. I've seen this look so many times from her, and it's always for the same reason. She mouthed, what the F did you do? And before I could say anything, the hostess said, please follow me. None of the guests could be bothered, but I could feel the eyes on me from every single person that worked there as we followed the hostess to our secluded table. Even the cooks in the kitchen stopped what they were doing to get a glimpse. It was very clear when the reservation came in, the word spread and excitement was in the air. As the hostess handed us our menus, a very pregnant waitress approached the table, and this was when it all came crashing down. As she welcomed us to the restaurant, I blurted out, I'm sorry, I'm not Zach Galifianakis. To which she replied with a smile, Yep, I can see that. The look on my wife's face was priceless, but I was too deep into damage control mode to address it. I said, I'm an idiot and thought it'd be funny, and I wasn't ready for what the waitress was about to unload on me. I'm a huge fan of Zach, and when the reservation came in, the hostess ran to the back and told my manager. He asked me specifically if I wanted the table because he knew how much of a fan I was. Yes, I felt effing horrible. Luckily, she seemed to have a great sense of humor. I also think she knew I was genuine with my apology. The restaurant took our picture and signed it, My Date with Zach Galifianakis. I left her a $100 tip and signed the credit card slip, Your number one fan, Zach G. Kim, if you're reading this, I hope you and your kid are doing well. <laughs> well, I'm glad that this story has a generally pretty happy ending. I mean, folks, there's some things where, like, it seems funny in your head, but take Take a few seconds to think it through, to be like, is there any way that this could go wrong? And if it could, either don't do it, or at the very least, mentally prepare yourself for how wrong it's going to go. <laughs> like, you're at, you're at a fairly, I assume, decently nice restaurant in a hotel, someplace that a comedian would likely be. They're maybe going to think that. I also, I don't know. Like... Why are you, why are you thinking that they wouldn't notice this or might not try and like piece that together or something? I don't know. But I mean, it's harmless enough, you know, or if someone's just like, you're not Zach Galifianakis, you could be like, it's a, it's a, it's a last name. More than one people have it. He's not the only Zach Galifianakis. Come on. But uh, I don't know. That's pretty funny. I, I would have left. Story five. Am I the a-hole for making my boyfriend get rid of his best friend's girlfriend off his snap? First, there's background information y'all should know. We've been together for about a year, so me, 21 female, and my boyfriend, 23 male, have never had problems with other men or women getting into our relationship, but he hasn't had a job or a car in over two months due to getting discharged from the military. I begged and begged him to get a job, which he now has. He's also said some pretty nasty things to me, and he snapped at me for no reason at all. I was getting pretty fed up with having to drive him around everywhere and paying for absolutely everything, so I figured I just needed space, so I told him just that. We ended up breaking up for a week. During this, his best friend, let's call him Tom, and his talking stage, let's call her Allie. They were all pretty upset with me for ending things, so Allie decided to send my then ex-boyfriend's bra and other explicit pictures, and Tom was perfectly okay with it. Anyway, they planned to hang out, and my now-boyfriend got back together, but I didn't know that till after. I'd asked my boyfriend to please unadd Allie, because I didn't feel comfortable, and he got very upset, but soon got over it, but still brings it up and gets upset. So, am I the a-hole? I'm gonna be honest, I, I think I pieced all of that together. I don't... I don't know, like, this doesn't sound like the best, most stable relationship 
Anyway, I don't, I don't know why you're getting back together with this person. He sounds like he's not super compatible with you, but whatever. No, I don't think you're an a-hole for wanting, I mean, well, he's taking him off of snap, unad together. I'm, you know, I'm trying to piece it together. I don't know. I don't care. Um, no, I guess you're not. You are. I don't. I don't even, I can't even muster up the, the feelings to care about this. You two seem on again, off again. You know what? Just, if you're so unhappy with it, just leave him again for another week. See what else, what else he finds. I, I don't have the patience for this today. <laughs> Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.